Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warns that there are those that are keen on attaining temporary peace at the price of making pacifying agreements with aggressive tyrannical regimes, first and foremost, with the dangerous totalitarian regime of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Three IDF soldiers were injured when a vehicle that was driven by a Palestinian man crashed into them in what the Israeli military defined as a terrorist attack. Iran's nuclear chief warns the European Union of ominous consequences if they would not follow through with action to keep the economic benefits of the 2015 nuclear agreement alive. Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu warned that there are those that are keen on attaining temporary peace at the price of making pacifying agreements with aggressive tyrannical regimes, first and foremost with the dangerous totalitarian regime of the Islamic Republic of Iran. During remarks at a special Knesset session in honor of visiting Czech Republic President Milos Zeman, the Israeli leader underlined the danger of refusing to internalize the lessons of history that allowed dangerous regimes to realize their evil plans in the midst of a passive and compromising international community. במחיר פיוסם של משטרי עריצות תוקפניים בראש וראשונה של המשטר הרודני באיראן. הם אולי לא הפנימו את לקחי ההיסטוריה, אבל אנחנו כן הפנמנו אותם. אנחנו הפנמנו אותם היטב, ועל כן התנגדתי בתוקף להסכם הגרעין שנחתם עם איראן, הסכם שסלל את דרכה לארסנל גרעיני והוסיף חטא על פשע לזה שנתן לה הון עתק לממן את תוקפנותה באזור. לא קיבלנו שקט, קיבלנו אימפריה שיעית רדיקלית מתפשטת שנוגעת כבר בגבולנו. התנגדתי להסכם גם כשהדבר היה כרוך בעמידה מול כל העולם. התעקשתי על החזרת הסנקציות על איראן ולשמחתי הנשיא טראמפ the Israeli leader further asserted Jerusalem's resolve to stand firm in the face of radical Islam, which he emphasized is not only a regional struggle. That said, while Netanyahu declared Israel as a frontier post of the free world in the campaign against radical Islam that threatens global enlightenment and freedom, there remain countries that hypocritically criticize the efforts by the Jewish state that seeks to defend itself against those mutual enemies. לצערי יש עדיין מי שנוהגים למתוח ביקורת אוטומטית דווקא על ישראל כשהיא מבקשת להתגונן מפני אויבינו המשותפים. איזה צביעות, צביעות שאין כדוגמתה. האסלאם הרדיקלי מבקע מדינות, טובח מאות אלפים ומניס מיליוני פליטים מהמזרח התיכון ובמקום לגנות את הקנאים צמאי האדם, מועצת זכויות האדם של האו"ם בוחרת פעם אחר פעם לגנות דווקא את ישראל with regard to international demands to advance a two-state solution that will force Israel to relinquish Judea and Samaria, the two largest territories within the West Bank that also include the Jordan Valley, Netanyahu warned that the demands are an attempt to render the Jewish state defenseless in the face of radical Islam that will attain those territories to threaten the entire Middle East. <laughs> של ערי יהודה ושומרון בלב מולדתנו ההיסטורית ישאיר את מדינתנו בלא הגנה ויאפשר לכוחות האסלאם הרדיקלי לאיים על כל המזרח התיכון. 
Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also referred to the growing rapprochement with the Arab world amid calls by the Islamist Hamas organization on the Arab and Islamic worlds to hold the phenomenon, which they refer to as a stab in the back of the Palestinian people. Netanyahu declared that the days in which the Palestinians actively sought to hold Israel's relations with the Arab world hostage have come to an end, as Jerusalem's rapprochement with those countries has become inevitable. Earlier in the day, the Czech president visited his Israeli counterpart Reuven Rivlin at his residence in Jerusalem, during which he underscored that even though for decades the international community discussed the inception of two independent states as the only solution to the decades-old Israeli-Palestinian conflict, Prag could not share this position as he cannot see an independent state in the Gaza Strip due to the fact that he views the Islamist Hamas organization that controls this territory as a terrorist organization. Israel's president, Reuven Rivlin, who warmly welcomed the town's support from his Czech counterpart for the state of Israel, thanked President Zeman for his decision to open, during his visit in Israel, a diplomatic mission in Jerusalem, which will serve as a first step in the direction of relocating Prague's embassy in the country to Jerusalem, the capital of the state of Israel. Now to the West Bank, where three IDF soldiers were injured when a vehicle that was driven by a Palestinian man crashed into them. The IDF spokesperson's unit released a statement in which it said that the Palestinian intentionally rammed his vehicle into the troops, who were performing engineering work on a route between Beit Umar and Al Arub, which is located adjacent to the Jewish Gush Etzion settlement block. In response to the ramming, an IDF soldier opened fire toward the vehicle, neutralizing the suspected terrorist. The three soldiers, one classified in moderate condition, while the two others sustained light injuries, were taken to a Jerusalem hospital for further treatment. While the IDF classified the incident as a nationalistically motivated terror attack, an investigation was launched to further substantiate the circumstances that led to the event.